Legend Story Studios literally tells everyone that they are going to be releasing powerful new cards in the Armory decks as they come out, and then they show some of those powerful new cards, and everyone loses their mind on Twitter. Surprised Pikachu face? Is that what we're doing right now? Okay, let's talk about it. Okay, first I'm gonna set the stage. Like, last week there was uh, the Pro Tour, spoiler alert, it happened, it was awesome. And uh, at the Pro Tour, there was a Q&A uh, from the Legend Story Studios, and one of the things that stuck out to people, and one of the things that's been highlighted lately on social media is this one right here. Generics like Crown of Providence, Snapdragon, Scalers, Fiendal, Spring, Tunic have become tests which other cards should live up to. Part the Mist Veil includes some class cards which may even exceed the power level in narrow spaces. Balance of Justice was the first card to pass this test. Our intent is not to get to a point where a player outright cuts a card like Crown of Providence in favor of Balance of Justice, because that is pure power creep, but finds that there is a case to play both and that is successful because balance of justice is in sideboards near you coming to a sideboard near you balance of justice okay so this has been talked about because people were like leading up to this announcement we're about to talk about people were like man they should really look at things like Fiendal spring tunic if this is the thought process they should really consider those cards maybe we should just straight ban those cards in favor of other cards coming down the pipeline or do the same treatment of balance of justice on those cards that's that's okay that's that sets the stage. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna slow my roll. That sets the stage for the Armory Deck KO presentation, um, which in when they announced, they said they were going to be printing powerful cards so that these decks are competitive at the Armory level. Okay, and um, there were there was a contingent of people, and this is a totally valid uh, concern. There was a contingent of people that worried that we'd get sort of a rewrite of what happened with the classic battles set where. Um, a very powerful card in Glint the Quicksilver was printed and it was like one copy of and you had to buy multiple of those things just to get access to that. And th think of this as another little side tangent that's existing uh, in this announcement as well. So Armory Deck gets announced and gets shown off. People were a little bit cautious about the possibility of them doing functional new cards in this set that you'd have to go out and buy. But there's a couple of uh, caveats and something we can talk about in a little bit. Uh, I just want to point this out as well. Armory decks are a new series of ready-to-play decks supporting ease of access to Classic Constructed, the most popular flesh and blood format in the world. Yep, 100%. They include new card designs in addition to many of the foundational cards used in tournament winning decks of the featured hero. So that means there are going to be foundational reprinted cards in this as well, meaning this is a fantastic product for new players. Uh, and then of course there's the worry that, oh, are new players gonna get their hands on this or is it going to get picked up by all the established players? And again, put that on the uh, dartboard. We'll talk about it here in a moment. Now, when you go down to the bottom of the Armory Deck page and you click the product sheet, it actually showed off two cards on this uh, product sheet that you can actually go and order as a retailer. Um, also, I want to point this out that if you go down to the bottom, Armory Deck KO uh, unit, one unit is the SKUs there, but you can get a carton of this or you will get a carton of this if you are a store um, with 12 of them per carton. So, for example, yes, they mentioned that this was going to be uh, tightly controlled and sent out to the stores that are running events with the hope that the players that are going to be going to those events can encourage other players to pick these up, buy them, and then run them out there. But uh, this is this is a sort of like a, a, a side thing that people aren't highlighting too much. The fact that it's Carton's 12 units and that's uh, 12 of these decks and hopefully these get moved through pretty quickly. People are focusing on these two cards. So let's take a zoom in on those two cards. I have them right here. Let me just turn all these things off. Let's let's do this button. There we go. Okay, here we go. I made it bigger so that we can see better together. So there's two cards here that are shown off and this is what is starting to make people a little uncomfortable. And in some cases I understand it. In some cases I think we're blowing it out of proportion. So I broke them down and I made them a little bit easier to see and read, hopefully. Savage Sash is the one that everyone's talking about. And then some people are worried about Roughshod, Run Roughshod. But let's start with Savage Sash, which is a brute chest piece equipment uh, that blocks for two and it has temper. So it can block for two and then it block for one. And after it blocks for one, it explodes. It also says action, destroy this. So you get to use this effect exactly once. Attack action cards with six or more attack or power cost one less to play this turn. 
hey, do you remember that time? Do you remember that time that they decided to um, go to the ban and suspended announcement and then take that card Berserk that wasn't seeing any play and remove it from the game because they said that something down the line uh, made that card incredibly powerful and the deck incredibly unfun to play against? Do you remember that? Hey, look, there's a card that would make that card incredibly powerful and unfun to play against. Savage Sash is really good. Now, is it so good that it's better than Tunic? And is that even relevant? Does that even matter? First things first, no, it's not so good that it's strictly better than Tunic because Tunic, in a lot of cases, in a longer game, gets you so much more value over the course of multiple turns. If you plan for this game to go almost to second cycle or to the second cycle of your deck, Tunic is the better choice for KO and probably for a lot of Brutes. Uh, if you want a full breakdown of it, I'll just do it very quickly. You have a four card hand. Uh, one of those cards gets played. One of those cards gets pitched. It's a blue that gets pitched. Uh, this thing costs two because almost everything costs two in that deck. You're floating one resource, you take Tunic, you can then attack with the Claw for three, uh, with Go Again because you discarded, probably this card, and uh, uh, drew, drew a card and so it replaced itself, and then you can pitch the card if it's a yellow or a blue, and play the final card in your hand. That's what Tunic does. What does this do? Well, it allows you to block extra, which is nice. It gives you two extra block, and then it gives you the effect that basically pops you uh, a, an extra resource one time. So. If we're looking at the power level, this is the perfect example of Crown of Providence versus Balance of Justice that they were just talking about in the previous arg uh, article and argument, right? These two things are about equal, but function in different ways more successfully. That's good card design. This card's good. Don't get me wrong. It's very good. And there's an argument to be made that with its inclusion, KO and likely Brutes in general just get better than they were before. They just strictly get better. Is that what we need? Why not? Why not? Brutes have been pretty downtrodden for the entire life of the game, and now this is their time to rise. Does it make them rise too quickly? Does this single-handedly, this card single-handedly make KO just instantly LL? Is he going to Starvo speedrun? No, no. This equipment is good. This is Courage of Blade hold good versus Tunic. You could make an argument in uh, Dorinthia that you run Courage, and in Dorinthia, sometimes you run Tunic. Like, this is that card. It's a very good card. It's cool, it's a staple, it's going to be a staple, and it deserves a place to exist in KO. KO is getting an embarrassment of riches like two years ago when Runeblades got everything under the sun they ever wanted. What are Runeblades doing now? Pretty much nothing, sorry Breezy. They're doing absolutely nothing, and yet people are freaking out about this card being printed and perhaps taking it a little bit too far. You can make an argument that it's going to be uh, a hotly contested item that people are going to want to buy and then try and flip and scalp. I'm sorry, but we're about to hit year five. Scalping doesn't really exist in this game much anymore, so if you're worried that people are going to buy this and try to flip it on the open market, that might happen for a few people, but really the biggest issue that I think is incredibly valid is to ask the question of whether or not this card will be um, a reason to go out and buy this as an established player, this entire product, this armory deck as an established player, and take it essentially out of the hands of a new player. That's a that's a valid concern. That's a that's a valid concern. I don't think anyone here is going to contest the fact that this encourages enfranchised players to possibly go buy that. The caveat to that is the armory deck first of, first and foremost is a new player product and if I am a competitive player, I'm a small small very small subset of the uh, overall community. If I'm a competitive player and I'm thinking, okay, I need a, a really good deck for a tournament. KO's done really well. He's going to continue to do really well. I need this card. I will go buy that. Okay. If you don't play Brute, and if you're not super interested in playing Brute, do you need to go and buy an entire $40 deck to get this one Savage Sash? No. No, you don't. You have no, if you love playing Warrior, who is incredibly well positioned right now, particularly with Dromai moving out of the way, do you need to go and buy this product so you can get Savage Sash as a non-brute player? No, we just spent six months talking about how this game has moved into a specialist meta and you are rewarded for being a specialist 
in general. And yes, technically there were four KOs in uh, Pro Tour Top 8. And so, oh, you know, maybe KO is the end all be all. I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But if, if the meta is moving to a specialist meta, this doesn't really impact most people. It impacts brute specialists and like high level kind of grinder type players, players that are going to look to play KO at a pro tour, uh, going to look to play him at a calling uh, battle heart, like those types of players. If you're not playing KO or brute in general, you don't care about this. So probably chill. We don't need to freak out about every single card. Now, run roughshod is an interesting one because that's a rare that could be a cycle and it's a very good card. It is a glue piece for KO. Play this only if you've discarded a card with six or more attack this turn. It is a blue one for five. When you play this card, it's still a one for five. It functions on a blue. It blocks for three. It becomes a six off of KO's effect. Uh, and it technically always basically meets its effect. So it is a really good glue card. I don't think that this will be a cycle. I think that this will function like many of the other previous um, like starter products as even though it's a rare, like a just three, you get three of these, they are all blue and that's like all you, that's what you get. I don't think this will be a cycle. If it is, then you'll have a yellow version that's a six and a red version that's a seven and that's Graveling Growl and that's very good. Now, if it turns out to be a cycle, I would expect them to print everything in this or I would expect to see this card very soon. And that leads me to another point. I think we're really good as a community and a society in general as seeing something and not thinking down the line, thinking about it in the exact moment that it exists right now. Savage Sash and Rough Run Roughshod are both in the exact moment that they exist right now, only available in this armory deck that's going to be coming out. That's it. They're only available in that. That is not to say that this majestic right here, Savage Sash, is not immediately printed in the expansion slot of Part the Mist Veil. That could very well be the case. That could 100% be the case. And then, what are we doing? Why are we having this conversation? Why are we kind of getting at each other when the answer could have already been solved? Like, the, the problem could have been solved already. Why are we going so hard in the paint on social media about this card? I think part of it is because players want their own hero to receive this type of treatment. And I get that. Like, that is totally valid. I would love to see, like, Wizard get anything. Period. End of story. That would be awesome. And you know what? It's been a while for Wizard. But do I... Do I, because this is not a wizard card and it is instead a brute card, do I like get all riled up, pun intended, uh, about this being just another thing that they get? Not really. I don't think you have to either. I think it's okay that they get this card. And I think it's a very real possibility that they see this reprinted at some point. There's nothing to say that they can't do that. In fact, that would be a fantastic idea, and it's probably an idea that they've floated out there. Legend Story Studios, this is what they do. They make this game. This is all they think about. They think about how this interfaces with their players. You. Why are we thinking that they haven't thought this through? I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little put off by the fact that I think we get so hyped up. Maybe maybe we're all just pent up after an incredible pro tour that went incredibly well and uh, had a really exciting ending. And we have to do something. We have to funnel our energy into something. It's like, now I don't have anything to compete for or do. I, uh, pro quest season's coming, but it's not here yet. And so I'm going to talk about a thing. I don't know, man. All I know is that this is probably not as big of a deal as we're making it out to be. I think the biggest deal that we should consider is whether or not this product is actually going to be available uh, in the necessary quantities for new players to pick up and grab. And then whether or not KO as a hero, because he's very powerful and because he has these new tools, will immediately start to, uh, you know, approach living legend status, you know, within six months, like a Starvo type thing, because then this product would not be very functional for new players. 
I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, I think uh, even at the Pro Tour level, the highest level, I think that kind of proved it. I think KO is going to do very well in, in Pro Quest season. I think KO is going to do very well going forward. But I don't think that there's a point total uh, amount enough for him to just sweep everything. And I think that Legend Story Studios has put us in a good position to... Uh, get a bunch of heroes a bunch of different points and it not to just be this reductive meta that falls to KO. But if it is that, and if I'm wrong, then KO goes and this product is not going to be a success, but I don't think we're going to be there. I think LSS handles their business like true business people and they have this uh, well planned out. So that's my take on this. Tell me if I'm wrong in a comment below. Also, huge shout out to MinMax Games uh, for uh, sponsoring this channel because they are awesome. And if you want to buy this product when it comes out, they will have it available for you. Uh, uh, if you're a new player and thinking about picking up uh, KO, it's a good choice. He's very good. And you can pick it up at MinMaxGames.com. Always, as always, if you want to support the channel and you want this dream to become a reality and for me to just sit in front of this camera day after day and make great things for you, I would love that. Uh, make this number go slightly higher and support on Patreon. As always, thanks for watching.